Across the 50, and he gets it to the 48 and a half. Makes it a little more manageable third down and about four. Yeah, he was stopped by Alexander Greenwich. A couple other guys, but Greenwich was the primary guy on that tackle. Orange Brewery with a third and four as we're hitting the five minutes left to go in the first half. Pretty fast half. Yeah, the, the Hobart game, the Merch Marine Hobart game, remember last week was over pretty quickly. That game moved pretty well. And you can see why, because Merch Marine just does not put the ball up in the air often. A pitch for Merch Marine going left, some blockers. This will be a first down as forced out at the 42 is Robert Moore. That was, a, that was a strong pitch. Halfback fully on the run, just caught that, didn't hesitate at all. A couple of guys almost got to him, but a little too late. I mean, when McDaniels made that pitch, he wasn't pitching it that far behind the people on the line. That's right. It, it, if somebody had been pushed back suddenly, it easily would have been knocked back for a backwards pass and a live ball. First and 10, Merchant Marine at the RPI 42. Four and a half to go first half, three nothing RPI leads. Mora goes in motion. Now McDaniel's back, looks to throw, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Gregory to flex, and he's too far away from Boston to 30 for an interception. That was similar to the route that they connected with Gregory a few downs ago. Four twenty-five to go, and you're listening to Rensselaer football on WRPI 91.5 Troy. Second and 10 for Merchant Marine at the 42. McDaniels on the option, pitches to the 40, and that's going to be all for Bruchet. Stopped at the 40 yard line. Lanieri, number 31 for the engineers, on the stop. About 37, 38. So Merchant Marine with the third and eight. They're moving players around now. They just need to get set. Yep, they got somebody on the line on the left-hand side. Now they're ready to go. McDaniels rolls out left, stops, looks to throw. Under pressure, sack back at the 46. That pillar. That is pillar. Yeah. Hill is all over the all over the quarterback a number of times today. Hill, one of our captains, senior, 5'11", 250 pounds from Lake Auto, Pennsylvania. Auto, H A U T O. Snap back to Swain as it's fourth down and long, and Merchant Marine is going to punt it. Gadar takes it at the 15 and stopped at the 17. Good punt coverage by the Mariners. 2.50 to go here in the first half. RPI leads 3 0. Number 20 uh, for the Mariners, Patrick Keyes, and I believe 28, Brooks Cannell on the stop on that play. Engineers have two minutes and 50 seconds before the half to get on the board. They lead 3-0, but have not done well once they get to the red zone. First and 10, RPI at the 17. Slacks on first down with the run, goes left, finds a lot of room, makes it out to the 25. Number 71 for the for the engineers, uh, Mitchell McDade. Nice job of blocking on that play for the sweep. Will do, and you actually have an excuse not to be there. Second down and two. Avery looks to throw on play action, puts the ball up near. Giacconi has it 35, caught by the ankle, and down at the 25. I bet that's number six, let's see. Yeah, that was Stone on the coverage. <laughs> Stone's always on the coverage. He saved the, he saved the touchdown. To the 
Line, Let's see if the engineers now with 212 to go in the half can keep the momentum going on offense. Schlatt takes the carry on first down. Nope, that's not Schlatt, pardon me. That is Amory on first down, takes the carry. On the left-hand side, makes it to the 17-yard line. Where he's taken down by Skylar Stone. An yes, who? An eight-yard <laughs> gain by RPI. Down to 140 to go in the half, three nothing RPI leads. They have it second and two at the Merchant Marine 17. Avery fakes the hand off the slacks, could pass complete to Hogan, loses the ball, Stone recovers at the 19. Boy, that's four times, four times down in the scoring area and giving up the ball. The second time they fumbled in the red zone. And it looked like RPI was going to make this, you know, maybe six. It's not six nothing lead, it's not a ten nothing lead. It got the three nothing lead, and now they've turned it over to Merchant Marine. RPI still has three timeouts left. Merchant Marine, not a passing team, so you expect them to stay on the ground at this point. If they can stop Merchant Marine, they can get the ball back before the half. Daniels under center on first down. Fakes the handoff, now pitches the ball, taken by Moore, and Moore manages to get across the line of scrimmage. This didn't look good at first for Merch Marine, and he stopped at the 24, and there'll be a timeout now by RPI. He faked two guys out very well. Finally got stopped by two others, but the first two guys that tried to get him, he went right by them. Finally so met by the third guy. 1.18 to go in the half. RPI burns their first timeout. 3-0 they it's lead. Of, this is a five. very strange first half offensively for the engineers. They've been up and down the field, moving the ball well on most of their series and have been in scoring position five or six times. They got one field goal, they missed another. How many times? Four? Yeah, RPI's only had five possessions. Well, four times they were down there. <laughs> Two fumbles, a, a pass that was missed in the end zone, followed by a field goal, and another missed field goal. So, not the best first half, although they've moved the ball, can't get it in the end zone. McDaniels. Pitches and that's taken by Jones and they're gonna claim a fumble here as the ball Jones crossed the 30 and I haven't seen the official signal yet who's got this. Jones would have had a first down and it's RPI's ball at the 31 yard line. So Merchant Marine coughs it up and RPI's back in business. Oh yeah, you can see it on the replay. The ball was out right as he crossed the 30 yard line. It's flying out in the air. Looks like number 77 is kind of taking claim to this. Marquise Francois coming out, raising his hands. I don't know if that absolutely means he had it, but he's sure excited. RPI with 110 to go in the first half, leading three nothing, now has the ball first and 10 at the Merchant Marine 31. Avery out of the shotgun. Bump fake, puts the ball up in the air, and Stone gets in front of that and breaks it up. It's thrown short that time. Godard was the intended receiver on that play. Stone was in front of him. Godard never had a hand on it. Stone was not happy with himself because he turned through and he may have had an interception. Yes. Second and 10 RPI at the Merchant Marine 31. 105 to go in the half. Avery, ooh, the Statue of Liberty play. And the carry is taken by Schlags and he makes it to the 19 yard line. Huh. Haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> it was well executed too. Yes, nice big hole for Schlags as everybody was kind of playing the pass over to the right. 
50 seconds to go. First and 10 RPI at the 19 yard line. 3 0 they lead. Pass to Lane in the flat. He's forced out at the 12. And the 11, we'll call him the 11. Kilroy, whatever his first name is. <laughs> he's, we got two different names for him. But he's the one that forced the runner out. I think his first name's Chris. Morrow slash Kilroy is his last name. Okay. According to some rosters and just Kilroy and other rosters. Second down and two RPI, 46.1 seconds left in the half. Ball on the 11 of Merchant Marine. Lane and Schlatz back there with Avery. Lane goes in motion. Schlatz, or pardon me, Avery rolling out to his right, puts the ball up in the air. Kadar has the touchdown! Kadar in the corner. They really needed that play. <laughs> 39 seconds to go and a half. That was five drives in the red zone. And now 10, well, maybe 10 points. We got nine so far. Cap on to try the extra point for RPI. Cue the holder, snap spot, kick is up, almost blocked. It is good though. So 39 seconds are left here in the first half. RPI now has a 10-0 lead on Merchant Marine. Now I'm hoping this game might be a little a, a reverse of last week. Last week, the first half, the offense could do no wrong. And the second half, uh, just the opposite. They, well. Didn't score. It was kind of like, uh, clock playing when they got on the board once and we started milking the clock the first half we had been very uh, unpredictable doing you know slants over the you know over the middle and uh, short running plays sweeps down the field long passes a little bit of everything but in the second half we got a bit conservative when they scored on the first drive of the second half. That would that being uh, uh, last week's last week's opponent. WPI. WPI. Yeah, we uh, won the ball game 28-21, I believe. Cap low kick. Did anybody touch that? I don't think so. Nope, nobody touched it. It goes out of bounds around the 15. So next you got anything WPI. Merchant Marine takes over at the 35. Ball was placed at the 35 yard line. Once again, homecoming First weekend out. here at Rensselaer. Football this afternoon, hockey tonight, among many, many other activities over the weekend. Class of 1965, 50th reunion. First and 10, Merch Marine at 35. McDaniels out of the shotgun. Looks left, puts the ball up, and nobody goes for it. Overthrows Moore. I don't think he knew the pole was coming. Behind him was Baker, who had cut inside. And the ball wasn't near anybody. Yeah, that was just a badly thrown ball. 34.7 seconds left for Merchant Marine. RPI with two timeouts in the first half, leading 10-0. Now Merchant Marine will bunch it up on second down. Just looking to get a first down, I think, and end the half. The pitch goes to Boucher, and he's caught back at the 34, loss of one. Stays in bounds. Clock continues to run. Loss of one on the play. Merchant Marine does not have to run another play. They're in no rush to come to the line. I think that was Lanieri. Now they'll come up with five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Snap the ball. This is the last play of the half pending a penalty. 
putting it up deep, and it's intercepted. No, not intercepted by Lanieri. He had it in his hands, dropped it. It goes incomplete, and that does it for the first half here in Troy. After 30 minutes, RPI leads Merchant Marine 10 0. Pretty good half for the defense, Kurt. They didn't play badly at all. Uh, I think the stats will show they did very well. Uh, the stats for the offense aren't probably aren't going to be bad either, except for points on the board should be a lot more than it is. But again, that's the stat that counts. Exactly. And <laughs> hopefully they'll come out and continue the good dr drives down the field, but get it in. RPI will get the ball to start the second half. So they have that to look forward to. Yes. Here we're going to run around the league during halftime so you can hear what happened in Liberty League football all-conference action last weekend as Bob and I take a break. The score here after one half of play between RPI and Merchant Marine, it is RPI 10 and Merchant Marine nothing. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Direct your attention to the South End Zone, where President Jackson, other members of the Rensselaer community are gathering with the class of 1965 representatives. They'll come to midfield for the 50-year club induction, and then the traditional singing of the alma mater, led by President Jackson.
Good afternoon, alumni, students, fans, all members of the Rensselaer community, and welcome, welcome to, to halftime of reunion and homecoming football game. I'd, I'd like to turn, turn the microphone over to Mr. John Templin, class of 1962 and current president of the 50 Year Club. Thank you, Jeff. It is my great honor to have the opportunity to induct the class of 1965 into the 50 year club. But first, we have two members of the class of 1945 back for their 70th reunion. Would you raise your hand? Thank you, gentlemen. I, I hope to be back there when I'm turning uh, 92. The, the club is made, of, made up of all alumni who are here 50 years since their graduation. He or she officially becomes a member of the 50-year club. In addition to general membership, we especially recognize and thank our donor members the regular members who make a $50 donation, which allows the annual award of more than $2,000 in community action prizes to members of the undergraduate red and white organization. The mission of the club is to enrich the lives of current students and alumni. We strive to sustain and enhance the traditions and spirits of Rensselaer through support of student and alumni programs. The 50-year club traces its origins back to the beginning of the alumni program and was informally incorporated as a chapter of the RRA in 1990. Our most important mission is to help keep the spirit of Rensselaer alive in all our alumni. At this time, we will do the induction of the great class of 1965. Members of the class of 65, raise your hand. On behalf of the Rensselaer 50-Year Club of Board of Directors, it is my privilege to formally induct the class of 1965 into the ranks of the 50-Year Club. We congratulate each of you and welcome you to the club. Congratulations also to all our 50-Year Club alumni. I hope you continue to stay involved and become active members of the organization. Please enjoy the remainder of reunion and homecoming. Thank you and go Red! Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson leads us in the alma mater with the pep band first, and then the second time with no music.
that uh, is unattended that needs to be attended. It's a white Dodge Charger, Virginia plate, VHC 1628. Please report to your vehicle. White Charger, Virginia plate, VHC 1628. Please report to your vehicle immediately. Now once again, please welcome the RPI dance team. Attention to the north end of the field, that beautiful Honda vehicle enters the field, parked right beneath the scoreboard for the Rensselaer Honda car giveaway field goal kick. Go, Bay, go! Josh Katz, class of 14, will attempt to win that car for a year by kicking the ball through the uprights. Let's give him a round of applause. He's kicking into the wind. Josh, thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Josh. He had a shot at winning that beautiful Rensselaer Honda vehicle for a year. And you can check them out and drive one away, one of Honda's amazing automobiles, by going to Rensselaer Honda just a mile east of ECAF Stadium at 770 Hoosick Road, Troy, or visit them online at getahonda.net. Rensselaer Honda. Simply better.
We have the winning ticket in the 50-50 raffle today for $245. The ticket is number 5227401. 5227401. Please claim your prize at the press box. RPI would like to thank the following sponsors, GE, Moe's, Subway, The Ruck, The Hilton Garden Inn, Rensselaer Honda, Domino's, Patterson, Sampson, Ginsburg and Griffin Law Firm, The Rensselaer Alumni Association, Sodexo, The Recovery Sports Grill, SethQ, Gross Electrics, Dunkin' Donuts, Yankee Trails, Tri-City Rentals, Domino's, Esco Fence, Saratoga Eagle and Ryan's Wake, all proud sponsors of RPI football. We have uh, a lost wallet that has made its way to the press box, a black wallet, a man's wallet that can be claimed we at the press box. We are back live with you once more here from the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. We're re nearing the start of the second half of play between RPI and Merchant Marine. The Engineers versus the Mariners. Liberty League football coming to you live on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Kurt Sutt, Bob Conway on the call for you. RPI leads 10-0 after one half of play. Before we get started, we'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to wrpi.org, and you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as we're sending something out over the ether of the air. We'll provide it for you on that feed. Again, that is wrpi.org. It'll be March Marine going left to right, RPI right to left across your radio dial in this third quarter. RPI won the coin toss to start out the game. They deferred their selection to the second half. They will be getting the ball out to start half number two with the 10 nothing lead. And the ball is booted away, taken at the seven yard line by Gadar to the 20, 25, finds a hole, 30, 35, 40, 45, and, and that's going to be it as he ends up running into Patrick Keyes, but a good run back to the 49-yard line. I should say that's McDonough for Merchant Marine on the kickoff. The first time he's been out there, Merchant Marine hasn't kicked off, and they haven't kicked any, attempted any field goals or PATs, they have no points. So first and 10 RPI at the RPI 49-yard line to start the second half. Gadar gets better every year as a punt returner, you know, or kick returner. Avery takes his team out. First and 10 at the 49, two wide outs to the right for Jeff Avery. He's going to hand this one off. Amory takes it, 50 into Merchant Marine territory and pushed down around the 47. First guy there, number 28, Brooks Canal. And number 49, Josh Woodburn. Second down and five for RPI as the ball made it out to the 46 yard line. Merchant Marine still in the 4 3. Three wide outs, slaps with the carry, got spun around as he crossed the line of scrimmage, falls backwards for a gain of two. On the bottom there. Number 95, Jacob Hill. I think 97 was in there too, Patrick Whalen. So we 
got third and three. Looks like it. Hobart leads WPI 24 to nothing in the second quarter. Avery puts the ball up along the sidelines and it's off the hands of, uh, is that Giacconi or Godar? Can't see the number yet. Turn around. That was third down. That was Giacconi, yep. uh, the attended receiver along the far sideline. That was third down. It goes incomplete on third and three. So fourth and three and Razik's out there to punt. Yeah, that was number 84, not 85. <laughs> Snap, Razik takes it, puts the ball up in the air. Low kick, and Merchant Marino will let this one bounce. It takes an RPI bounce inside the 10, and it'll be down at the seven. 13.41 to go here in the third quarter. RPI got 10 nothing. Well, let's see what RPI can do. The defense played well, well the entire first half. I'll give you some stats for uh, the Merchant Marine. They had five first downs. Passing yards, they had 14. Uh, rushing yards, they had uh, 69 yards on 28 carries. RPI had 69 yards on 15 carries. And 232 yards overall. Pa I mean, passing yards. On first down, it'll be a rush by Merchant Marine and forced out at the line of scrimmage is Boucher. Number 44, once again, for the engineers, Alexander Greenwich. Greenwich is a solid middle linebacker, calls the defensive signals. He's 5'10", 220 from Miller Place, New York. Also at the at the half, that's our Hobart 24 nothing over WPI at the half. And then St. Lawrence leads Rochester 7 nothing at the half. Second down and 10 for Merchant Marine at their own seven. McDaniels under center. No wideouts for Merchant Marine. McDaniels keeps it himself, finds some room, and I thought he was going to make the 10. Yeah, it just about makes the 10-yard line. Not a lot of room, yeah. but a pickup of three makes it third and seven. Yeah, the middle of that RPI line, number 77, number 70, 59, and 99. Uh, and, and, and that's uh, Francois, and that's... Diego Catino, and that's Malik Joseph. All stood him up pretty good. Third and seven. I'm sure the engineers would like to get on the board early in the second half. A little room on that board. Third and seven play, McDaniels keeps it. Goes to the left, cuts up field, short of the first down. Yep, I think he's about a half a yard short. He made it yep. to the 16 and maybe a little bit more, but he had to get to the 17. Your final out of town score so far at 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter, Springfield 20, Union 17. Let's see. Yeah, Malik Joseph on that stop. Stopped him just short. Probably about a half a yard short. Not close enough, and Swain will come out to punt again. He's been seeing a lot of action today. On fourth and one. Swain just gets this one away. Almost got hit. Ball takes an RPI bounce, and Merchant Marines watches it roll out of bounds onto their sideline. 11.32 to go here in the third quarter. 10-0 RPI leads. They get the ball at the Merchant Marine 45. That was almost blocked. There were three guys there. They just missed blocking it. But nobody hit him. Next week, the engineers travel to the North Country, St. Lawrence University my son's alma mater. First and 10 RPI at the Merchant Marine 45. Davinis takes the carry and can't find his way past Woodburn, who stops him for a loss of one. Yeah, we had Woodburn uh, on, on there and uh, 47 Reeves both. Stopped him uh, factually for a loss. I think we lost part of the crowd during after halftime. 
Second and 11, ball to 46. Avery drops straight back to pass, throws. That's complete to Lane at the 35, and he went backwards after he caught the ball, and that cost him a first down. He's about a half yard short. Number nope, now they're going to say first down up to 35. Okay. Brooks Canal on the tackle for Merchant Marine. Actually, a nice, nice route. Actually, a bad, a bad spot. Yeah. <laughs> he was actually short when he went down, and he had backed up. RPI gets the first down to 35-yard line. 10.30 to go here, third quarter, 10-0 RPI leads. To Venice up the middle, he stopped after a pickup of two. Number 38, Marcus Kitchen on the stop for Merchant Marine. As I said, still in that 4-3 defense. They've bent all day, but they have really not uh, given up a lot of score. Yeah. Second down to Vinis. Tries to string this one out to the left and can't turn the corner. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. The defense for Mercury Marine is playing well enough to be in the lead right now. Yes. Woodburn once again. Josh has been... Josh had uh, five tackles at halftime. And he's been in on at least two in the second half already. He and... Uh, his sidekick there, Stone, who had eight tackles in the first half. Third down and eight RPI at the Merchant Marine 33. Avery's got wideouts on each side, slot backs on each side. Takes a snap out of the shotgun. Looking to put the ball up in the air. Under pressure, got pulled by the shirt. Now runs along the line of scrimmage, throws, and it's caught. One minute grab by Guitar, and Guitar is in for the touchdown. Nice play by Avery. Nice job by the offensive line. It was good that the engineers got on the board early in the second half. 9.07 to go in the third quarter. RPI leads at 16-0 with the PAT to follow. Cap on to try the extra point. Snap, spot, kick is up and it is good. So again, 9.07 to go here, third quarter, RPI 17, Merchant Marine nothing. Just tune it in, folks. 9.07 to go in the third quarter. RPI leads at 17-0. Uh, kind of dominated the game on offense, but up, up until the last two series, uh, they had been in the red zone about four or five times and only had three points to that at that point and then put 14 on since. Uh, RPI's defense has done a good job all day. Uh, holding Merchant Marine to five first downs, uh, 14 passing yards and 69 uh, rushing yardage for a total of 83 yards on 33 carries. RPI had 33 for 301 yards. That was all at halftime. Union just turned the ball over with about 244 to go trailing by three against Springfield. Cat puts the ball up in the air, and does it go out of bounds? Yeah, it's the third time today it's gone out of bounds, so Springfield will take over at the 35-yard line. Union was down 14 going into the fourth quarter. They scored two touchdowns, but gave up a field goal to make it down by three at this point. Are they on the road? I believe so. I can tell you for certain in a moment. Yep, Union's at Springfield today. So that game's nearing an end. I think tough to tell if Union has timeouts on the live stats. First and 10 for Merchant Marine at the 35. McDaniels was looking to throw, pulls the ball down, starts running with it, and gets to the 39. Nice tackle there by number 24, Teak. Florio. 
I'm sorry, yes, Teak Florio. I was looking at his, his number to make sure I had the right number. 24 is Florio. Second and six at the 39 for Emerge Marine. Eight and a half to go in the third quarter. RPI with the 17 to nothing lead. McDaniels looked like he was going to hand off, uh, kind of hit his own man, and now he's going to run ahead and make it a third and two after he picks up four. Malik Joseph in on the stop. A few other guys involved, but Joseph was the primary stopper. So we got third and two. Third down and two for Merchant Marine. They really, they need to string something together now. This is an important down for them. Two receivers on the left for Merchant Marine. That was Martin in the backfield. And it's taken by Moore, actually. He doesn't have No, it. pardon me, McDaniels. McDaniels is the keeper. Sorry about that. McDaniels is the keeper, and he's only got one yard after that. So it's fourth and one for Merchant Marine. Official timeout on the field. One of the Mariners is hurt. 7.31 to go here in the third quarter in Troy. RPI 17, Merchant Marine nothing. Update you on those scores again. Uh, under 2.40 to go in Springfield. It's Springfield 20, Union 17. And the other two games at the half. Hobart 20, nope, uh, they're in the third quarter now. Hobart 30, WPI nothing. And just starting the third quarter, St. Lawrence 7, Rochester nothing. St. Lawrence must be pretty good. They were pretty good last year. And Rochester has done well this year. Yes. I don't think they've lost, have they? Rochester is undefeated going into yeah. today's action. Uh, Rochester, Hobart, RPI, and St. Lawrence are undefeated in the league. And, they're, and all are three and one otherwise, except Rochester, I believe. Rochester's three and oh. Yeah. Hobart's going to go to 2-0. They're comfortably ahead of WPI, 30 to nothing. And Union's going to fall to 0-2 if they can't come back against Springfield. Second half's not moving too quickly, is it? Well, actually it is. 7:31. Just seems like. Oh, I see. There was an injury on yeah, that Martin, play. Yeah, Martin for Merchant Marine is getting up and walking off under his own power. It is now fourth and one for Merchant Marine. The offense is staying out there. McDaniels under center on fourth and one. Hands off to Jones. Jones has got the first down and plenty extra to the 49, almost to the 50. So Merchant Marine takes a chance. I think they had to at this point. They move the chains, maintain possession. Number 74 for the engineers on the stop. I believe that's Bennett. On first down at the 49-yard line, no gain as Boucher was trying to run to the right and turn the corner and couldn't find any room over there. Alexander Greenwich, once again, he's playing very well today. And yes, it was a Bennett play before. 6.50 to go third quarter, 17 to nothing, RPI on top. Gain of about half a yard for Boucher in that play. Down to 103 to play in Springfield, still a three point Springfield lead over Union. On second down, this handoff by J to Jones goes to the 47. So, Orange Marine taking time. They're getting yards bit by bit. Diego Catino on the stop for the engineers. Third and six for Merchant Marine at the 47 yard line. McDaniels in the center, you got a wide out on the right, everybody else is bunched in close. McDaniels hands off to Jones and he makes it to the 43, that's two yards, a little under two yards short of a first down. If you went for it earlier, I think you're Merchant Marine, you have to go for it now. 
Bennett once again on the stop. Clock is being eaten up on these plays. Oh, that's what Merchant Marine does. They yeah, they keep the ball on the ground and time just keeps ticking away. Fourth down and a little over one, officially one on the scoreboard. Merchant Marine keeps the offense out once more. Second straight fourth down attempt for the Mariners. Same formation, McDaniels gets grabbed by the shoulder, pushes ahead, he's got the first down, keeps the ball, keeps backing up, and he's pushed down to 31. That was a huge gain and a lot of effort for McDaniels. Well, they dragged him the wrong way. <laughs> First and 10 for the Mariners at the RPI 31 yard line. Five to go in the third quarter. 17 to nothing, RPI leads. First and 10 at the 31. Jones takes it. Nope. Yep, Jones took the handoff from McDaniel. Somebody just lost a helmet from RPI, and the ball is stopped at the 28. I thought McDaniels and Jones had trouble with that handoff. For RPI, that was the Piccolo who lost his helmet. He has to go off. Tommy Bennett in on the tackle again. He's been he's been in a lot of tackles this second half, Bennett. They're using a lot of different guys on the defensive line all day. Second down and seven for Merchant Marine at the 28 yard line after that gain from Jones. The RPI well, Piccolo had to go off the field for one play. This is a keeper by McDaniels, and he stopped around the 26. Number 98 in on the stop, John Hartman for the engineers. So it's Hartman, Catino, Malik, Joseph, and Bennett, four down linemen. Third down and five. Third down and five for Emergent Marine. And it's, of course, they're in it's four down territory basically for the rest of the game, I think, for Emergent Marine, unless they get some points up there. And the handoff goes to Martin straight ahead, and he stopped at the 25. It's tough slogging for the Merchant Marine ground game against this RPI defense. Malik Joseph and Bennett once again on a stop for the engineers. 3.07 to go, third quarter. RPI leads at 17 to nothing. Ball, the nose of the ball on a 25 yard line for a fourth and officially four. It's about three and a half. Merchant Marine is the third straight fourth down. They are going to go for it on. McDaniels under center on fourth down. Man goes in motion, McDaniels fakes the pitch, tries to turn up field, gets away from one man, tries to stiff arm another, and he's gonna get pushed out, and Merch Marine turns it over on downs at the RPI 27, right around there, 26-27, it's RPI's ball. Our, our outstanding pursuit on the part of the RPI defense. Let me see who that is. Yep, it's Bennett again. Bennett, final guy to get him and get him out of bounds. He's got about four or five tackles in the last five or six plays. First and 10, RPI at their own 26, up 17 to nothing. Avery fakes the handoff on play action, puts the ball up in the air. Gadar has it along the sidelines, avoids one hit. Uh, then he's out at the 35. He got nine. Gadar runs nice routes. He's got good hands. He gets away from people. First and 10, Rex
Second and one RPI at the 35. Avery looks to throw on second down, puts it up. That is caught, complete at the 40, 45. Esposito to the Merchant Marine 40, and then 35. He's pushed out for an RPI first down. Skylar Stone, once again, on the force out. And saved a touchdown. On first down, Esposito gets the carry. It was going right, turns up field. I'm not sure what everybody was ooing about down below us. He stopped after a gain of seven to 28. Number 95, Tom Slagharder uh, for Merchant Marine. I think they thought it was a hard hit. I didn't particularly see it that way. Is it 95, Jacob Hill? Yeah, 94 slight harder, I'm sorry. Second down. This time the carry is by Wells. There's RPI switching up the running backs, and Wells gets a first down to the 18. Who knows on this sheet? Huh. He's got at least two with different names on it. Two deep in the roster. different first names. 50 seconds to go here in quarter number three. First and 10 RPI at the 18 of Merchant Marine. RPI leading 17 to nothing in this first down run. Who do we have in there this time? We have Ramsdale taking the run for RPI. And he has stopped at the 14. As RPI keeping it on the ground and chewing up clock just like Merchant Marine has been doing. Ethan Wells was in there too. Number 30 and six. on the last play. Second down and six. Avery to Wells. Wells to about the 11. Short of a first down, it'll be third and about two as that is probably the last play of quarter number three. Time is winding down. RPI is just gonna let the clock run out. So 45 minutes are done here in Troy and it's RPI 17, Merchant Marine nothing. Yeah, good second half so far for engineers on both sides of the ball. Uh, Merchant Marine obviously, obviously is uh, predominantly the run game, so it's clock, clock keep moving. We're already in the fourth quarter. But it still doesn't seem exciting. It seems slow or something. I can't explain it. I got the impression that RK, RPI could could break one almost any time. But today hasn't been one of those days. They had a couple of long ones. I guess the excitement is in Massachusetts where in the fourth quarter, Union made it down to the Springfield 23, trailing by three, and was intercepted in the end zone. Oh my. So Springfield has it at their own 20 to start out a drive with 54 seconds left. First downs, RPI now 14 to seven. Passing yardage, RPI 315 to 14. Third down and about three for RPI at the 11 of Merchant Marine. Fourth quarter just about to start. RPI 17, Merchant Marine nothing. RPI going left to right, Merchant Marine right to left across your radio dial. Avery looks end zone and incomplete. Moreau Kilroy on the coverage there. Actually good coverage because he stopped and didn't hit the receiver. It was good coverage, very good. If he had not stopped, he would have hit the receiver for a pass interference. Instead, he stopped pretty much on a dime and, got, and was just standing there in the way and that prevented the pass from being completed. Cap is going to come out to try an extra point. I'm not an extra point, a field goal, pardon me. Mr. Cap on 28-yard attempt from the left hash mark for Cap. With the wind. 
Snap, the Q spot is down, the kick is up, and Cap is good. 14.51 to go here in the second half. RPI leads 20 to nothing. Okay, as I was saying, the stats, RPI's first downs were 14 to seven after three. Their rushing yards, they had 24 yards for 101 to 117 yards at 43 uh, tries. Passing yards, RPI 315 yards, Birch Marine 14 passes, RPI 17 for 23, no interceptions. Merchant Marine one for five. Total offense plays and yards. RPI 47 plays, 416 yards. Merchant Marine 48 plays, 131 yards. Uh, punt returns, RPI has four for 32. Uh, Merchant Marine punted six times for 34 yards. RPI twice for 31.5. Fumbles lost, RPI two for two, Merchant one for one, and penalties one for 15 for Merchant, five for 56 for RPI. Caps kick goes down to the one yard line, heading out with it for Merchant Marine is Moore. Moore makes it to the 23. As the Mariners start out there and they need points, they need them right now. It's a final out in Springfield, Springfield 20, Union 17. So Union's now 0-5 on the season. Okay, rushing, Nick Schlatz, 40 yards on eight carries. Tavina, 17 on seven. Amory, 13 on two. Wells, 13 on two. McDaniels, 61 on 20. DeVar, 37 on 11. Wiley Martin, 13, uh, 13 on four and Robert Moore, 11 on two carries. Merchant Marine first and 10 at their own 23, 1444 to go in the second half. Merchant Marine down 20 to nothing. McWilliams sees nothing downfield, tries to run with it, does a somersault. That counts as being down at the 22, it's a loss of one. Looks like Bennett again, number 74. Loss of one on the play. It was Bennett. Merchant Marine with the hurry up, they, again, when you have a running game like this, you're gonna chew up time and you need to go to the hurry up sooner than normal. You can't get huge chunks of yards with the passing game. McWilliams, or McDaniels, pardon me, pitches it back and this is gonna be an opener to the 40, 45 to the 50 and Moore, or Moore is down at the RPI 45. I think Lanieri caught him. Let's see if that was 31. I mean, the longest rush for Merchant Marine prior to that was 11 yards. That was the biggest rush of the game. And first down for a Merchant Marine only gets them about two yards as there's under 14 to go here in the second half. That was McDaniels with the ball. Under 14 to go in the second half, 20 to nothing, RPI leads. That was not Lanieri that time. It was once again, Tom Bennett. He's been all over the field in the second half. He's been playing a lot in the second half. And obviously, wanting to impress and is impressing. Joseph for RPI is injured, so we have an official timeout on the field with 13.45 to go in the fourth quarter. RPI 20, Merchant Marine nothing. That is not good news. He's our best interior lineman, probably the best uh, athlete on the team. And as you mentioned earlier, he's standing up now and walking off on his own, shaking it off. He's tough as they come. Malik Joseph is a big man. Let me give you the facts on Malik. Malik, number 99, he's a D lineman, a junior. He's 6'1", 295 from the Bronx, New York. Second and eight for Merchant Marine at the 43. Daniels with a line heavy to the right, hands off, and this makes it down to the 38. Martin with the carry. Merch Marine once again to the line quickly. Bennett and Keith Florio on that tackle. 
Martin on the third down carry makes the first down and gets some more bonus yards as he breaks the initial tackle and he gets it to the 28. Engineers bring Marquis into the game. Marquis Francois. Very quick substitution for RPI and one of the players, McDaniels, I keep saying McDaniels, McDaniels on first down gets to the 24. You know, this hurry up may have been what Burst Marine should have been doing earlier. I doubt if they could have kept up that pace the whole game. Second and six. McWilliams keeps it, gets to the 21. Philip on that one, McDaniels. number 94. I don't know where McWilliams suddenly came from on your mind. It's McDaniels. Third down and three. McDaniels under center. Hands off to Martin, who doesn't get the first down. He stopped at the 20 after a gain of one. And it'll be fourth down, and obviously going for it is Merchant Marine. That was number 44, Alex Greenwich. In the middle. Junior, 5'10", 220. Right back to the line. McDaniels under center on fourth and about two. McDaniels keeps it, runs straight ahead, and he's got the first down, stays with it, and he's to the nine. It'll be first and goal for Merchant Marine. McDaniels is good. He, uh, he makes his own yardage for the most part. Anytime they, they get him in their grasp, he, he does the spin move one way or the other, usually picks up two or three more yards. Although, truthfully, RPI's done a good job uh, limiting their running game. Uh, at least that by halftime, they had rushed for 69 yards. First and goal from the nine for the Mariners. McWilliams got stepped on, I think, as he came off the line. Throws the ball. That's incomplete. He was going for Gregory in the end zone. And he was Gregory was double covered on that play. Who got stepped on? I thought McDaniels, as he came away from the line, got oh. his foot stepped on by a lineman. Okay, I see. Second down, pitch, and inside the seven, or pardon me, Moore takes it inside the five. Moore is a sophomore running back from Pace, Florida. It's like most military academies, these guys are from all over the country. Third and goal for Merchant Marine at the four. McDaniels keeps it himself, tries to cut in and can't get there, down. The ball comes loose after he was already down. His arm and everything hit the ground and then the ball came out. So the officials immediately signal down. It'll be fourth and goal. Ball's at the two yard line, fourth and goal for Merchant Marine. Field goal does not do them any good right now. They need touchdowns. 10-20 to go here in the fourth quarter. They're down by 20. Fourth down play. McDaniels hands off and it's touchdown. Merchant Marine, Martin makes it in and Merchant Marine finally gets on the board. Well, they, they earned that one. They moved the ball up the field consistently on the ground quickly. You know, we, gotta, we gotta look for us. Uh, well, we'll see if we look for an onside kick or not, I think. I don't think it's too early. Maybe. McDonough to try the extra point. The kick is up and it's good. So RPI 20, Merchant Marine 7 with 10-13 to go in the fourth quarter. Okay, we want to remind you, you're listening to Rensselaer Football on 91.5 WRPI Troy. Also reminding you that this evening at seven o'clock, the puck will be dropped for RPI's season opening exhibition game. St. Michael's? St. Thomas. Thomas. St. Thomas, I don't know that team at all. I don't know if we've ever played them. In Canada. I know where they're from, but I just don't remember playing them.
St. Lawrence now has a 20 to nothing lead on Rochester. All the more reason we need to show the rest of this game what our offensive abilities are for our own confidence because we're going to play a tough team next week. McDonough, short kick taken at the 25. Ramsdale has it to the 35, to the 40, to the 50. Ramsdale stopped at the 48 of the Mariners. Number 38. Marcus Kitchen on the stop for Merchant Marine. So 10-13 to go, RPI has at Merchant Marine side of the field. This is the fourth time they are starting a drive on the other side of the field. Strangely, or not, depending on how you look at it, RPI's had nine previous possessions. Eight of those have ended on the Mariner side of the field. The one that didn't ended at the RPI 43. RPI for the fourth time starting on the Mariner side of the field. Schlatt's on first down to stop at the line of scrimmage. Number 47 was the first guy there. Once again, Dylan Reeves. They moved to the fourth quarter in Geneva, Hobart 30, WPI nothing. Second and 10 RPI at the 48. Avery on play action, looking downfield. Gets away from pressure, puts the ball up, and it's dropped. That was Giacconi. I think we've got a holding call against RPI. Giacconi should have caught that one. He should have had that, and it's holding against RPI. I Offense. was actually surprised the referee Number 75, the flag earlier. 10 yard penalty. I was Repeat watching first him down. watch the Repeat play, second down. and he didn't pull it out right away, and I was wondering why because it was obviously holding. So the ball goes back to the RPI 42 for second and 20. They're due to go to Hogan. I don't know if he's in there now or not, but it's kind of play. He's a big play guy. Another Statue of Liberty play. This time doesn't work as well as they're actually going to lose a yard. Handoff went to Schlatz, and that one didn't fool anybody. Schlatz actually ran into the defensive lineman. Now they got himself in a position third and very long. Third and 21. Merch Marine had to get one of their defensemen off the field. Avery out of the shotgun on third and 21. Slings the ball downfield. That's caught complete. That'll be a first down. Nice catch. Hogan. McHugh. Is it Hogan? No, it's McHugh. Oh, it is McHugh, number 15. McHugh to the 33-yard line. That's a first down for RPI. That's McHugh's first catch of the day. He's one of the rotating, I'd say, five or six wideouts that are used pretty regularly. First and 10 RPI at the Merchant Marine 33. Eight and a half to go, fourth quarter. RPI 20, Merchant Marine 7. Three wideouts on the right for Avery. Fakes the handoff. Pass complete to Lane. 30. Lane to the 25. Gets hit there. Ooh, that's kind of a real rough hit when he went down. Legal. A little high. I think he got him chest kind of to head, not arm to head. Number 38, Marcus Kitchen on the hammer. <laughs> Gain of nine for Lane on that reception. Second down and one for RPI. You are listening to WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. Kurt up Bob Conway on the call for you today. Again, second and one at the Mariner 24 for RPI. Amory goes in motion. Avery puts it downfield. I don't know who he was looking for. He's going to get, there's going to be a flag coming out. Amory got knocked down, but that was well overthrown. Yeah, it was. There's also a flag in the backfield. The referee threw a flag as well. 
Could be the same thing, could not it? No, I don't think so. Last week they had three flags for the same call. Well, this time they, they came up and talked to the referee. Tom Winnie's a referee. One of the judges came up and talked to him, and then the referee pointed to his flag. I thought the hit occurred after the ball had passed everybody. Second penalty on RPI. <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> no, he did not. So the ball was holding 10 yards and then 15 yards back the other way. So, so holding on the defense, now? it's first, first down. down yeah. the, the holding against the defense made it automatic first down, and then the right. 15 yards got moved them back the other way. So it's first and 10 at the 29-yard line for RPI. This last minute is taking forever to go by. Avery out of the shotgun, first and 10 at the 29 for the engineers. Avery throws complete to Gadar, but he went to his knees to grab it, and he's down he inside the 25. There doesn't seem to be any hustle to get up to the line of scrimmage. Well, for RPI, they're ahead. They don't care. That's what they did last week, remember? Second and five RPI at the 24-yard line. Under seven to play here in the fourth quarter. RPI leading 20 to seven. Avery looks to throw, doesn't see anything, brings the ball down, and nope, he's not gonna throw the ball. He's gonna get pushed out at the RPI sidelines. He's out at the 27, Avery loss of three. Play 47. Dylan Reeves again. I wish these windows were back about three feet. <laughs> the game has moved now into the realm of critiquing architecture. No, I just never can see down here without standing. Third down and about seven for RPI. Avery dishes this one off short to Schlatz and he's not going to get a first down. He stops at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard short. And it'll be fourth down RPI at the 28 yard line. RPI going to ponder their decision here as we're coming up on the six minute mark of the fourth quarter. Hobart. 37, WPI 7 in the fourth quarter. If I can get the right kind of punt here, I'd do it. But not one to bring them out to the 30. 25. And who's calling a timeout? It'll be RPI calling a timeout as they want to talk this one over further. Again, 5.40 to go here. Quarter number four, RPI 20, Merchant Marine at seven, fourth and nine RPI at the Merchant Marine 28. Next week, RPI off to Canton. Not the one in Ohio, the one in New York. Let's play St. Lawrence, it's a one o'clock start next Saturday. Of course, RPI Hockey against St. Thomas tonight. We'll bring that to you on the air. That's a seven o'clock puck drop at the Houston Fieldhouse. Just a short walk away from the East Campus Stadium here in Troy. Ralph Fraser, he's got his team. around him as they figure out what they want to do on fourth down. They are keeping the offense out there. The 
Avery out of the shotgun. Merchant Marine cross to the neutral zone, they're back. Now he takes a snap. Looks, throws, and is that complete? Did Gadar have it? Yes, Gadar has it for a first down to 17 yard line. Just took it off. Just got it before it was going to hit the turf. He took it off his top of his feet. Yeah, it was <laughs> that was close. I wasn't sure if he had it or not. I wasn't either. So RPI converts on fourth down, first and ten at the 17 of Merchant Marine. 520 to go, fourth quarter. RPI up by 13. He just made the first down too perfectly. Avery's got two wideouts left, one to the right. Schlatz in the backfield. Schlatz takes the ball and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Merchant Marine will now take a timeout as they need to stop the clock. Marcus Kitchen once again in on the tackle. He's had a number of tackles today. I only have stats through the half. But at that time, let's see if Kitchen was involved. You didn't get to, I handed you the third quarter stats. No, I haven't seen that. No gain on that last play, second down and 10. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, he's finally on the board here. He's got six tackles. Thomas Bennett for RPI has 12 tackles. Greenwich, 11. Villa, 10. Francois, 6. Skylar Stone has 10. Woodburn, 9. Keys, 6. Kitchen, 6 for Virgin Marine. Receiving, Gadar, 5 for 98. Lane, 4 for 80. Hogan, 4 for 47. Giacconi, 1 for 50. And receiving, 1 for 14 for Virgin Marine. Well, they don't pass a lot, do they? They do not. That's why they need to start taking timeouts because if they want to score two more touchdowns, you need to stop RPI, score two touchdowns, and if you're a running team, five minutes is an awful lot of time. Second down, about 10 for RPI. Putting it up for Gadar. End zone. That's his mom. Did he get it? Yes, touchdown, Gadar. Gadar in the end zone. RPI leads 26 to 7. Gadar had number 27, Kilroy, all over him, but he hung on to the ball. Here's a replay here. Yeah, he was juggling it, and he managed to get possession. No, that it didn't show it. There it is. The best angle was on the big board. This is what RBI needed. Snap spot for the extra point. The kick is up and Caps kick is good. 4.59 to go in the game. RPI 27, Merchant Marine 7. Now, has he made all his extra points today and missed one field goal? Yes. And made one field goal. Made two field goals. Oh, made two. Okay. Well, that's a good day. That's women's hockey taking on the University of North Dakota right now at Houston Fieldhouse. And at 7 o'clock, men's hockey takes on St. Thomas. Let's take a look here uh, after the third period. Once again, Schlatz has uh, 40 yards on eight carries. Tavinis 17 on seven. Amory 13 on two carries. Wells 13 on two. For Merchant Marine, McDaniels. 61 yards on 20 carries, uh, 37 yards on 11 carries for Navarre. Martin, 13 for four and four carries, and Moore, 11 on two carries. McDaniels is one for five. Jeff Avery is 17 for 23 for 315 yards. Caps kick is going to bounce inside the 10, picked up. Moore is going to take it out to the 20, 25. Moore still on his feet, 30, caught from behind. Moore still going, and he stopped at the 38. Number seven, Jair Dorsey, freshman linebacker for the engineers. Finally got him down. He's 5'11", 175 from Laurel, Maryland. And I'm told the coaches are 
very high on him as a linebacker. 37, this is the best start for Merchant Marine today, their own 37. First and 10, McDaniels puts the ball up in the air. That's complete. Gregory has it for nine to the 46. Brought down by number 26. Red Gahagan. Okay, there's some issues here where the ball is. It's at the 46 and now the clock because the officials had to go in and move where the ball was and now I think they want to reset part of the clock. Well, it's a weird thing to do comparative scores in the league so far this year. <laughs> Right. Hobart, Hobart was blanking WPI? Well, it's 37 to 7 now. WPI has scored in the fourth and quarter. They, they beat Merchant Marine 30 to 15 last week, and a last minute block punt would have been 23 15. Four wideouts for McDaniels. His throw is a bounce pass to Gregory, and that's incomplete. It'll be third and one at the 46. 423 to go here, fourth quarter, RPI 27, Merchant Marine 7. Yeah, we had uh, Mark Grimes and. Keith Florio right there on the coverage. Good position. Third down and one, four wide F formation for McDaniels. Martin in the backfield. McDaniels rolls to his right, under pressure, keeps the ball himself. He'll get a first down to the 48. Is that Catino? Yes, it is. Oh, Grimes, it wasn't Grimes, it was Catino. Diego Catino. First and 10 to 48 for Merchant Marine. They're down by 20. Passes tipped. Could have been intercepted, almost. <laughs> Baker was the intended recipient, and now, you know, nothing's going right for Merchant Marine. They want to get the ball back into the middle, and it hits one of the Mariners running back to the, to the huddle. Clock stopped with 4.03 to go in the fourth quarter, second and 10. Four wideouts for McDaniels. Martin in the backfield, takes a snap, rolls to his right, looking downfield, to finally puts the ball up, that's caught, I don't know how, but Moore got it at the 38. And the defender was all over yeah, it. was Buss who was all over it. Yeah. RPI has to get some players off the field. There's the snap. RPI is going to get the benefit of the doubt on that. McDaniels puts the ball up in the air to the end zone, and that, and that is going to go incomplete. 3.42 to go. Engineers lead it 27-7. They win today. They'll be 2-0 and in the league. And 4-1 and overall. Ball to 38 for a second and 10 for Merchant Marine. Three wide outs to the left this time. One to the right. Martin is the running back. McDaniels, immediately under pressure. He'll get sacked back at the 45. Number 98 eventually gets him. Johnny Hartman. There were two or three other engineer and carrier linemen there as well. Merge Marine is going to take a timeout with 3.32 left to go here in the fourth quarter and down by 20 points to talk things over after the sack. It'll be third and about 16 now for the Mariners. We'll add five seconds to the clock. So Merchant Marine making a battle of it here as the fourth quarter winds down. Trying to get at least one more touchdown on the board. 
Again, your out of town scores. Springfield is already defeated Union 20 to 17 out in Springfield. Hobart leads WPI 37 to 7 in the fourth quarter. And St. Lawrence leads Rochester 20 to nothing. That's with about 12.51 left to go in the fourth quarter. Setting up some pretty good ball games for the next three weeks. Four wideouts for Merchant Marine. McDaniels out of the shotgun. You know, he's not getting any time back there. He's got a roll out to his left. Now he's running with the ball. McDaniels to the 40. He gets hit. And he stopped at the 37 for a fourth down. And Merchant Marine is going to burn another timeout. But he gained a yard? No, he gained a lot. He had been sacked back in the 45. He made it to the 37. He gained eight. Where's the mark? Ball's on the 37. The sack was back to the 45. They just ran the play from the 45, made it to the 37. Oh. They'll put three seconds on the clock, and Merchant Marine has used its last timeout. 326 left to go here in Troy. RPI 27, Merchant Marine 7. games at this stage of the game there's not a hell of a lot to talk about <laughs> now it's RPI's been a better team most of this game and uh, in the first half they didn't score when they should have in the second half they did ball short to Martin at the 40 to the 35 to the 30 and Martin's got a first down on the screen pass, basically, to the 26-yard line. But Merch Marine out of timeouts. Clock stops on the movement of the chains. It'll be first and 10 Mariners at the 26. Now this is the time for the defense to have their, their pride, get their pride going here. McDaniels rolling around on first down. His throw is incomplete. It bounced. Yeah, I, I saw the ball on the ground as well. RPS trying to claim an interception, but no, nope, it hit the ground. Second down and 10. Second down and 10 for Merchant Marine. 3.08 to go here, fourth quarter. McDaniels throws short. That's to the 20-yard line, falling backwards. And getting another yard is Crook on the reception. You see, looking up names now that haven't been mentioned for Merchant Marine because they're suddenly passing the ball. Third and three. McDaniels looks left, under pressure, gets hit, and he won't get this pass away. He loses all the yards they gained on those first two downs, and it'll be fourth down and almost 10 as the ball's back to the 25. Alexander Greenwich once again. Nope, longer. Ball's back at the 27. Nope, now the 25. Greenwich has had a heck of a day. Fourth and nine for RPI. Greenwich had 11 tackles going into this court, this last period. Daniels takes a snap, looks downfield, puts the ball up in the air, and bat it around and bat it down. Hits the ground, and that'll be a turnover on downs for Merchant Marine. With 2.07 to go, RPI takes over at the 25. Yeah, without the, the final stats, you know, Bennett had 12 tackles, Greenwich had 11. Pilla had 10, Francois had six, all before the fourth quarter. Uh, Avery has had another wonderful day. He had seven for 23 for 315 and two TDs, a long of 53 and no sacks. That was after three quarters. Engineers first and 10 at their own 25. This will be a first down. Wells takes it to the 37. Merchant Marine cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. It stops right now. We'll restart once the chains are set. Two minutes to go. RPI has a new series of downs. 
They have to snap this by the time there's 127 left. So RPI is going to stand around the ball and wait. One second on the play clock, and Avery takes a knee. I'll have to do this a couple of more times. And then it'll be official. There's 80 seconds left. So it's just a question of taking some knees, and RPI will win game, their fourth win of the season. They'll get their fourth win of the season against one loss. The homecoming slash reunion crowd will be happy about this. Yes, very happy. The tailgate crew over there with the football program, They're, all the parents are over there with their tents, as they are after every game. Another knee on second down, and RPI has to do this one more time. And we will once again get to hear the RPI football players and coaches sing the fight song after the game. New tradition after Coach I got here. That's the final knee. There's 20 seconds left officially on the clock, but nobody's going to be snapping the ball again. And RPI is going to have a homecoming victory here today as they defeat Merchant Marine 27 to 7. RPI had a, I would say, a a very good day on defense and a so-so day on offense. Uh, not, not a bad day on offense. Moved the ball very well, but I guess the only negative I would say is that they blew some opportunities to score. I don't know if blow is the right word, but they didn't score sometimes when they should have. It. In the red zone, in the first half, about three times, they weren't able to get in. They were down there five times in that first half, and they got in twice. We haven't got any final stats yet, I don't believe. I certainly have not. So the teams are making their way off the field, or to wherever they want to on the field, and it's time for us to run down today's game. Uh, it's not a real thriller here in Troy. A lot of the games so far this year haven't been thrillers, but if you're, RBI, if you're an RPI fan, all the games that weren't thrillers were victories for the engineers, and I guess really that's what you're going for. So RPI scored first in today's game. 8.09 to go in the first quarter. A 20-yard field goal by Cap made it 3-0 RPI. That was the score at the one quarter. In the second quarter, RPI got a touchdown. 39 seconds left after a turnover from Merchant Marine. Avery to Gadar for 11 yards. Cap extra point made it 10-0 that was scored at the half only one score in the third quarter again RPI 9.07 to go Avery to Gadari 33 yard touchdown pass and Caps kick made it 17 to nothing RPI that was the score after three quarters fourth quarter Cap kicked a 28 yard field goal with 14.51 to go to make it 20 to nothing RPI at 10.13 to go Merch Marine got a touchdown Martin with the two yard run McDonough's kick made it 20 to 7 RPI then RPI came back with 4.59 to go in the game Avery to Gadar for a 17-yard touchdown pass. Camp with the kick made a 27-7 RPI, and that would be the final in today's game. RPI with the win improves to 4-1. They are 2-0 in the conference. Merchant Marine with the loss falls to 1-3 this year. They are 0-2 in the conference. RPI goes to play St. Lawrence next weekend, a challenging game. They are defeating Rochester right now in the fourth, 20 to nothing. Merchant Marine is going to play the other team in that game next weekend, they are traveling to Rochester next Saturday for their third Liberty League contest. Scores from out of town as we have them right now, or actually two are finals. Springfield defeated Union 20 to 17, and Hobart defeated WPI 37 to seven. And in the fourth quarter, I mentioned St. Lawrence is leading Rochester 20 to nothing. Engineers of the game. On offense, I've got uh, Logan Gadar. Uh, he had after three quarters, 98 yards on uh, five catches, two touchdowns. Got a third touchdown in the fourth quarter. Yes, he did. And uh, Jeff Avery, uh, he had 
17 for 23 after three quarters, 315 yard and two touchdowns, and he had a third one in the fourth quarter, a long of 53. Jeff Avery, Logan Gadar, my offensive stars of the game. On defense, uh, these numbers got nothing but better in the fourth quarter. Tom Bennett, 12 tackles. Alexander Greenwich, 11 tackles. Anthony Pilla, uh, 10 tackles. So I got three guys on defense. Bennett.